Raoul Raparel, who is co-director of the Open Europe Think Tank, campaigning for EU reform, and Liz Bilney, chief executive of Leave.eu. That's a campaign group which is backed by UKIP. Good morning to both of you. Raoul, if we can start with you, regular contrib- contributor on this programme as you are. Uh, give us your, your pithy pitch for reform and staying in. Well, I think it's a great opportunity for reform. Um, This is the first time in almost 40 years that a lot of European leaders are owning up to the fact that Europe needs to change. It's gone through a number of crises. Uh, We don't know how that reform is going to go yet and how that change is going to happen, but I think there's time to give it uh, to play out and see how it goes. And I think a lot of people are prejudging this process on both sides. I think we need to wait and see what Cameron gets and how the reform package goes before anyone makes any decisions. Okay, Liz, your opening salvo. We've got months of this to come. Make it a good one. Okay, I will try my best. Um, it's interesting the the comments just made there because obviously we have heard the first pitch of the reforms and they do sound pretty weak. So we want to be strong. We want to get our country back. We want to take control of our laws. We want to take control of our trade and our finances. And we can do that independently on our own. We're not part of, um, you know, we're not part of anything. We, we're an island and... We, we can do really well just by coming out and we will have a better opportunity. So we want to paint the vision and show people what it can be like. Yeah. Roll up, roll. It's interesting that so much of the debate, and you know, obviously the, the debate's very much in its infancy at the moment, but you suspect so much of the debate will focus on the economics, the business case, etc. And two very opposing views of the world begin to emerge. Uh, those who say, actually, we can do very well outside of the European Union, we can have bilateral trade agreements with the Chinese, look at how the Americans do, etc. And those, I suppose, like you, who say, actually, look, it would be folly and madness to leave the European Union. Yes, reforms are absolutely necessary, but we mustn't leave. Well, firstly, that's not what I'm saying. I I don't think leaving would be the end of the world. I mean, Open Europe has done a comprehensive study and we found that the economic impact would be somewhere between a loss of 2.2% of GDP to a gain of 1.6%. I think what we have to say is that if you're going to leave, you face some tough choices outside. You have to be very open, very liberal. Uh, That includes open borders, probably, and being liberal to movement of people. Uh, And it includes a very strong deregulation drive and a strong trade liberalisation drive, which I don't know if everyone one in the country is on board with. So I think people backing leave have to do it for the right reasons. I think we also have to realise that currently the EU and its free trade agreements cover 60% of the UK's trade. If the TTIP is signed and we get a free trade agreement with the US, that will be 85%. So do people really think an extra 15% is worth leaving for? It's a big question, but there are some hard questions both sides have to answer. Liz, I mean, I, I know you'll say actually we can do very well outside of the EU, but some people you talk to say, you know what, I'd, I'd rather be a bit poorer if it meant a bit more sovereignty. Is that, is that a widely shared view in your movement, do you think, that people are prepared to accept the risk, at least in the short term, that we might all be a little bit poorer if it means that we have an independent UK? We won't be poorer. Um, at the moment, we're putting in £350 million pounds per week. That's the bill we have to pay to be part of the EU. If we come out, we, we don't have to pay that anymore. So we, we will be better off by £1,000 per person. That's real money in people's pockets that they'll be getting back. So to start with, you know, we will not be poorer. We will be stronger in every sense of the word. We'll be able to trade more. We'll be able to take back control of our laws and we'll be able to take back control of our finances. We will be better off. Roel, I, I know you're not here, Roel, to, to speak for the Stronger in Britain campaign. They're, we're about to see the launch of their campaign in Brick Lane in East London very shortly. But comment on this observation that we've got Lord Rose fronting up the the in campaign if you like a, a very prominent businessman and there are some people who say you know actually we're sick and tired of hearing business leaders say how brilliant the European Union is because of course th- there's only upsides if you're a business leader you get all that lovely cheap labor flowing over from Eastern Europe you don't have to live with the downsides because you've got a lovely house in leafy suburbia some way from all the potential problems that things like mass migration introduce so therefore give us a sense of whether you think it was that he's the right man for the job well, I think that's a, that's a very good question. And I think the inside has a number of challenges here. I mean, it's, it looks a lot like the same old people making the same old case as we heard, heard in the Euro debate 10, 15 years ago. Uh, they need to try and appeal to the swing voters. At the moment, they're just appealing to their core votes, people who are already in. You know, I'm an undecided voter. I don't know how I'm going to vote. And the inside has not yet made any case that convinces me to say, OK, actually, you're right. I mean, I think there are a lot of people who are quite sceptical of the EU in this country, uh, but could see maybe the economic 
economic benefits would be worth staying in for, but they need to make that more clearly. And this idea that Will Straw pitched earlier on your programme about an emotional case for Europe, frankly, that's just not going to cut it. I mean, people in this country aren't emotional in a positive way about the EU. I think the positive case you have to make if you're the in-campaign is reform. Europe is changing. This is a great opportunity. Uh, we can have to give it a chance to see how it goes, push that reform. If it doesn't work, then you know we'll see. But I think that is really the positive message they need, not this idea that we have an emotional attachment to Europe, because I just don't think the UK does. Interesting. Uh, Liz Bildy, Raoul there was talking about swing voters. There was a poll published last week by uh, Vote Leave. Obviously, you know, as the name suggests, they want to pull out of the European Union. They were saying that the polls stack up a bit like this. A third of people want out and they will not be moved on the subject. A third want in, ditto, they feel pretty firm about that. But there's a third in the middle who truly have not made up their minds and you're reaching out to them. That's, that's correct. Um, it's, it's really there all to play for at this stage. And part of our strategy is to tell people what it could be like to come out of the EU. Um, once people know and are armed with the facts, you know, we're here to dispel the myths and to present the facts because we know that when people are armed with that information, they will choose to leave the EU. It's a scary thing moving into the dark, which is why we want to tell people exactly what it will look like in terms of our trade, our finances, and taking control of our own laws and being able to...